So I thought I'd do something that none of you would expect, which is to implement a game of life simulation. And I hope today you'll see actually how straightforward the game of life is to get something quite satisfying. I'm going to take you through everything step by step so you yourself can go away and implement this in your own gameplay and see uh, if you can take this a bit further. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to want to be able to do is take a frame of state and represent that on the farm. So the way we're going to do that is representing pixels as one if they're white and zero if they're black. And our white pixels are going to be hay because that's white and our black pixels are going to be bushes because they grow the quickest and they've got the most contrast with hay. So we're going to try and paint this test frame to the farm. So we're going to start by moving to the origin and then painting each row in turn. So for row in uh, the frame, then for each cell in the row. If the cell is zero, which means it's a black pixel, we need to plant the bush. Whereas if the cell is one, and we're just going to say else because we've only got two cell types, we're going to harvest, which is going to automatically grow some hay. And then we need to move to the next cell. And in this game, the coordinate system works with zero, zero at the bottom left, increasing X coordinates to the right and increasing Y coordinates upwards, which is different from how the frames kind of laid out in text wise, because you have uh, the top row here would be index zero which is actually the bottom row on the screen. So we'll we'll draw this and then I'll change the test frame to demonstrate what, what I'm talking about exactly there. So after we've drawn a cell in a row, we need to move east. And when we've drawn a full row, we need to move to the next row, which is gonna be north. Let's try our paint frame algorithm with our test frame. So you see we've got the ones, which are the white pixels, which are gonna be hay, and the zeros, which are the bushes. And just to demonstrate what I was talking about, about the way that the coordinate system works, if I change the top row of the test frame here to zeros, so we'll have some bushes, that's actually gonna be the bottom row in reality. And that's just gonna help with our bookkeeping later on because the coordinates in the game are gonna match up with the coordinates in our frames. This is a useful paint frame function. Obviously we wanna implement the full game of life, uh, but to do that, we're gonna to need to iterate over frames and paint them one at a time so this is going to be a useful utility i like this test down here but i'm going to wrap it in an if name equals main so we can still import this function in a new window without running the test frame so the game of life is played on a 2d grid like our farm and it's got four simple rules that actually produce a extraordinary amount of complexity so in the game of life there are two types of cells there's live cells and dead cells and our live cells are going to be hay and our dead cells are going to be wood and for every cell in the grid we look at that cell's neighbors. So that's the eight cells surrounding it. And we count the number of live neighbors. And if there's less than two live neighbors in the next frame, that cell's gonna become dead. If there's two or three, then it stays alive. If there's greater than three, then it becomes dead. And if it was a dead cell and it's got exactly three live neighbors, then it becomes alive. So these are the rules that we're gonna to want to implement. And to do that, we're going to need a function that tells us the number of live neighbors that a cell has. So let's start by implementing this function. So def get num live neighbors. And by the way, we've only got a six by six grid, uh, which isn't a lot of space. So I think it's gonna be most useful if we wrap our world around. So let me just demonstrate what I mean by that. So if we move north a couple of times here. So in this cell here, it has one, two, three, four, five genuine neighbors, but we're gonna treat these three cells on the far right as also neighbors. So we'll have the world looping around like a torus in both directions. But for now, let's just implement the simple case, which is where a cell has eight genuine neighbors. So if we move east here, this is a simple case. This cell has eight genuine neighbors, and you can see that the cell itself is alive. It's got three alive neighbors, which according to our rules would mean that in the next cell, it's still alive. So let's implement get num live neighbors. So what are we gonna need for this? We're gonna need to know the position that we're interested in, and we'll make this a tuple. So we'll have our position tuple. And we're also gonna need the current state, which we're gonna call frame because that's what we've been doing so far. There is an argument to be made that in the domain of the game of life, we should call this state or something else and, and sort of decouple our representation of the game of life state from the painting state, but I'm not gonna worry about that for now. So how do we find the neighbors? The position tuple has X and Y coordinates. So in this case, the X coordinate is two and the Y coordinate is three. So to find the neighbors, we need to look at all of the surrounding cells by adding minus one, zero and one to every component of the position tuple, except if our offsets are both zero and zero, then we're gonna skip that. Let's go ahead with that. For X offsets in minus one, zero and one, and for Y offsets in minus one, zero and one, 
we have a new cell. So the new cell is going to be X plus the X offset and Y plus the Y offset. But we don't want to include the cell itself in this calculation, right? It's only, we're only talking about neighbors. So if both the X offset and the Y offset are zero, the new cell is gonna be the same as the original cell. So we need to skip that. So we say if the X offset is zero and the Y offset is zero, then we continue. So we have our new cell. Now we need to find how many live neighbors the new cell has. So let's create ourselves a variable to store this. So we'll have live neighbor count. That's gonna start at zero. So we'll say neighbor value. That's gonna be indexing into the frame according to the new cells X coordinate and the new cells Y coordinate. And then we just add this to the live neighbor count because one is alive and zero is dead. So that's quite convenient. We don't have to do any if statements or anything like that. We can just add to the live neighbor count. So we have live neighbor count plus equals the neighbor value. And then finally, we return the live neighbor count. And let's give ourselves some white space just to make this easier to read. So this should get us the num live neighbors around a cell. Assuming that the cell is in the middle, we need to worry about what happens on the edges in a minute. But let's just test this. So we'll have a, let's have a test cell. And let's work with the cell that we're currently in. So that's going to be, what did I say? Zero, one, two, zero, one, two, three. So test cell is gonna be two, three. And just to make it super clear which cell we're talking about, I'm gonna to move to the test cell first. And then print get num live neighbors in the test cell according to the frame that we're currently on, which is gonna be the test frame. And we need to import that. So this is where our if name equals main is coming in useful. So from paint, import test frame. And we also need move to, which is a custom utility. So from utilities, import move to. So we'll have test cell. We're gonna to move to the test cell, which shouldn't move us. It should be the same place. And then we should print the live neighbors. And what do we expect? We expect the live neighbors to be three. Y offset has never been defined. Offset. One, two could not be used as an index. Oh, sorry. This is how the indexes work. Cool, so this is three. So that works, let's move us one to the left and see what happens. So our new test cell is gonna be one, three. And what do we expect? We expect to be in this location and we expect one, two, three, four, five live neighbors. Ooh, three, that's interesting. So let's, uh, let's get in here and do some debugging. So let's have a look first at every neighbor that we're looking at. So let's quick print the new cell and the neighbor value. And we're expecting this to look at eight cells. Let's see what it does. It does look at eight cells. Are these the correct cells? Let's see, zero, two, zero, two, yes. Zero, three, zero, four, one, two. Skipping one, three, because that's our cell. One, four, and then two, 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 three, two, four. That's correct, okay. So this is working in that it's looking at the right cells, but what's happening is that our test frame is not matching up with what we're seeing on the screen. So I think we've probably got our X's and Y's mixed up here. So let's see. The first index into this thing needs to be the row, which is represented by the Y coordinate. And then the next index into it needs to be the column, which is represented by the X coordinate. So in fact, this new cell needs to be the other way around here. So let's see what we get now. We get five and our output now looks correct. So just to be sure that we're doing the right thing, let's move ourselves down to this cell, which is going to be two, one, and see that we're interacting with these bushes down here correctly. So if we're in two, one, then we expect the number of live neighbors to be three. So let's see what happens. So the number of live neighbors was three, and you can see we're looking at one zero, which is live. One one is not live, one two is not live, two zero is not live, two two is live, three zero, three one, and three two is live. So that seems to be working. So for every 
middle cell we can get the number of live neighbors but if we move to a test cell which is on the edge so let's say zero three which is going to be over here it still worked <laughs> why did it still work because we should have an x of minus one. Oh. Yeah, okay, that's a little subtle actually. So you see here, we're actually looking at the coordinate minus one, which in Python is a valid index into the list. It just means go to the end of the list and go minus one. So when we look at this x coordinate minus one, so we're looking at this row in the test frame and then minus one is the final entry, which I think is actually correct. So maybe we don't have to do anything fancy about wrapping around the edges in Python, which would be really convenient. Let's think about that a bit more. So. Minus one is okay, but going seven would not be okay, right? So let's put our test cell over to the other end. So if we go to five, three, error. Because here we're trying to look at the next cell off the right, which Python isn't helping us with. So in fact, all we need to do is modulo this by the world size. So let's modulo this by the world size. In fact, technically the frame is not the size of the world. And just to make this bulletproof, I'm gonna use the frame size as the source of truth in case we wanted to draw a smaller frame on the same size world. And I think this will make our minus ones the, the correct value anyway. So let's see what happens in this case now. So instead of getting an index error, we're now wrapping back around to zero two, uh, which is correct. And just to reiterate what's going on on the left side now, now that we're moduloing, we don't do minus one anymore. We do five, two, which is actually, I think, a little bit cleaner. So this is the medium case. Let's try the very hardest case, which is gonna be the top cells or the bottom cells. So let's try the origin. See here, we've got seven live neighbors. What's going on here? What's a neighbor to the origin? Well, there's the easy ones. There's zero, one, one, zero, one, one. Zero, one, one, zero, and one, one. What else have we got? Five, five this corner here. That is the cell that would be to the bottom left of our current value. We should have this cell here, which would be here. So this should be five zero, which is correct. And then five one, which is this cell here. And then we do the same thing on the top. Okay, so now we can get the number of live neighbors for a cell. It's time to move on to implementing our actual game of life. So for every cell, we need to check if it's alive or not, and then compute what the state of that cell should be in the next frame. So let's go ahead and do that. We could do with, do we have enumerate? We do have enumerate, excellent, okay. So for, um, let's say y row in enumerate frame, that's gonna give us the y coordinate and the whole row, which is exactly what we want. And then for x, cell in enumerate frame. This is gonna give us the X coordinate of that new cell. So we, we have the coordinates out for our frame. Now we need to create the new frame. So let's say next frame. And this is also gonna be a 2D list. We're always gonna to need to check the number of live neighbors. So let's just say live neighbors. And we're gonna get the live neighbors here. of this cell, which takes in a tuple. Yep, so it's gonna be X, Y, and our original frame. Then if the frame is alive, and if live neighbors is less than two, then the new value is going to be zero. It's gonna be dead. If the live neighbors is between two and three. So let's just, um, let's just say, I'm getting ahead of myself. We're looking at three states here, live cell less than two or greater than three is dead, otherwise it's alive. So if the live neighbors is less than two or the live neighbors is greater than three, then it's dead. Otherwise, the new value is alive. Else, if the live neighbors is exactly three, that's correct, isn't it? Yeah, exactly three, then the new value is equal to one. 
otherwise the new value equals zero. And because we're splitting, we, this is quite nested, right? We've got lots of ifs, lots of else's. You can tell that new value is always gonna be present the way that we've coded it, because we're always using else rather than elif or something. But when I see code like this, I always get a little nervous that maybe down the line we'll change the rules and we won't get that same guarantee. So I'm just gonna add a little check for us that um, the new value is always set. So I'm gonna say new value is none at the top of this. Otherwise it would still be present from the previous iteration of the for loop. So I'll say new value equals none. And in fact, let's put that down here because it makes more sense next to those if statements. And then down here we'll say, if new value is none, then we're gonna bail. We're gonna say, oh dear, oh dear, new value was none for uh, this cell, so for x, y, and then we're gonna exit. I think we can exit. We'll test this in a second. So iterate game of life, takes in a frame, it gets the new value. What do we do with the new value now? Well, we have a next frame. We have the row. So we need to start building the new row in here. Add the cell to the new row. So the new row append the new value. And then at the end of this, we do new frame append the new row. This is going to build up the next frame of the game of life. And then obviously at the end here, we need to return the next frame. Okay, so if we take in one frame, we should be able to iterate the game of life and get the next frame. So let's try that. Print iterate game of life on the test frame. Error enumerate has, oh dear, we don't have enumerate. I was kidded because it was in light, light yellow. Let's see, four loops, four loops. For I in sequence, for I in range, we might have to use range, okay. Not to worry. So for y in range length of the frame, that's going to give us the y coordinate. And then the row is going to be the frame in the y coordinate. And then the same thing here. Oh, we don't actually need the cell here. So that's quite clean. Okay, let's see. This is running. So it's a 2D list. This is iterating the game of life on the things that we've got on here. It's hard to interpret as is. It's gonna be easier once we actually see it on the screen. So let's start painting this on the screen. So let's say while true. Do we have paint frame imported in here? Test frame, paint frame. We'll say current frame equals iterate game of life on the current frame. And we start with the current frame being the test frame. We get the current frame and then we're gonna paint that. And just to give ourselves a little bit of time to actually see what's going on, I'm going to pause by doing a flip after each frame. So let's say pause flips. We'll do two flips. We'll see if that's enough or too many. Four flip in pause flips. We're gonna do a flip. So let's see what happens. So this iterates the game of life. Most things have died in this case. And then this, oh, this is satisfying. And then we end up stable here, apparently. Let's see, does this seem right? This cell here has two live neighbors, so it stays alive. This has two live neighbors, stays alive. All of them have two live neighbors, so they stay alive. The ones in the middle have too many neighbors. The ones on the outside have too few neighbors. So this does look correct. Awesome, let's try it with something a bit more advanced. Let's try a glider. So this is what a glider looks like. A glider is a primitive in the game of life that should move forever. So let's see what happens. Glider frame, let's not pause at all, let's see what happens. There we go. And hopefully when we reach the edge of the grid, the glider should move straight through the bottom of the grid again and keep looping forever. So let's see what happens. There we go. We go through this corner and then we should see some cells appear and then eventually we'll be back in the middle again. Hopefully this is a cool proof of concept for you guys. If you enjoyed this, then I encourage you to give it a go. See if you can take this a bit further than I did. See what you think. Uh, and if you like this, then please do give the video a like. It uh, really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time for more fun with the Farmers 